Our next focus of 1800s popular culture is an artistic movement called realism. And again, we'll, we'll look at some literature and some paintings and we'll add a different category, drama, to help understand what realism is. Now again, if you wanted to just have this sort of nutshell definition, you would describe realism as an artistic movement whose aim was to represent the world as it is. It's a reaction to romanticism, which idealized subjects, which is especially important to people during the Industrial Revolution. Because remember, life gets very hard, it's very different, and real life doesn't look the way it looked in the literature and paintings of the Romantic movement. All right, realism is just everyday people doing everyday things in everyday life. Now, in literature, some of the classic examples are Victor Hugo, the same author of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, but he wrote another book called Les Miserables, The Miserable. Again, everyday people, everyday you know, things, and everyday life. And you know, this story, even though it doesn't have that same emotional connection as the romantic work does, um, really captured people's attention and again, like his other works, has been translated around the world and has been performed as many plays and movies and TV adaptations as well. Um, the other notable realist author of the time was Charles Dickens and his stories have also continued to be made into movies as recently as just a couple years ago. He's known for Oliver Twist and David Copperfield. He often wrote about children or included in his works were long passages that described what it was like to be a child, often a factory worker. Continuing with literature, you should be familiar with the Bronte sisters, Charlotte, who wrote Jane Eyre, and Emily, who wrote Wuthering Heights. And, you know, these stories definitely had a little bit of the romantic flair to them. There were some emotional connections. I mean, both are essentially love stories. But if you read Jane Eyre and you read Wuthering Heights, you will see that the minute details of these characters' days are described fully, page after page after page. So while there is a very exciting story in both of these authors' plot lines, um, there is a lot of focus on just the everyday mundane as well. And it's interesting to note that neither Charlotte nor Emily published as themselves. They had to use male aliases in order for their works to be published. Mothering Heights, you might remember, was adapted um, by MTV even a few years ago and there was a movie last year that was another incarnation of Jane Eyre. So these are stories that you know you should be familiar with with today. There's, they still speak to us today even though they are a couple hundred years old now. We also have drama being a primary art form and Authors like Henrik Ibsen, who wrote A Doll's House, really tried to capture the true life experiences of people in the Victorian age. And A Doll's House really kind of takes you inside a Victorian marriage where, you know, this kind of classic line between husband and wife, where the husband says, nobody sacrifices his honor for the one he loves. And Nora says, really? Hundreds and thousands of women have done just that. Um, if we want to look at art, and we can look at Gustave Courbet, the Stonebreakers, you guys had looked at some other works by him the other day, but this is just a couple people here, and they are breaking down stones to build a wall. Again, everyday people doing everyday things in everyday life. Um, and ultimately, nobody captured everyday life as much as photographers. It's Louis Daguerre who captured the first image-making process in 1839, which later was used to expose social conditions.